Many people still talk about the so-called generous offer of Camp David II, where Barack and the Israelis were going to give the Palestinians over 90% of the West Bank, and how Arafat and the Palestinians declined. What Barack was offering in terms of the land deal was, um, I would say, 80% of uh, the West Bank and uh, Gaza, but not contiguous, basically keeping most of the settlements intact and the Israelis living in the settlements in blocks. And so what we were going to have were three separate blocks of Palestinians with bypass roads in the middle, sort of bordering as moats around these Palestinian areas. And then in key strategic areas, especially on the borders, we'd have the settlement blocks. And the Jewish settlements and the Jewish population in the settlements would be living this privileged life, as I was talking about, under a completely separate body of law with total freedom of movement, that block, while the Bantustan would be subject to permits, would be subject to military order, etc. There would not be any viable independence, and the Israelis would still maintain control of the larger picture. What this map tries to show is in the green, dark green and light green, which are areas A and B, how the Palestinian areas are so carved up into little tiny enclaves that this is, in a sense, what the Palestinian state would be. This is certainly not liberation. This is not autonomy. This is not dignity. And, of course, the issue of Jerusalem was not clear. And what about the refugees? In Gaza, 80% of the population of Gaza are refugees living in refugee camps. They are not from Gaza. Their homes, their land is from Israel, what is known as Israel today. In the West Bank, there are hundreds and thousands of Palestinian refugees. So if you were going to give, make a Palestinian state in Gaza, that may liberate the Palestinians who were originally from Gaza, because they got rid of the occupation, but the refugees from Gaza stay in the camps. Plus, the refugees who are living inside Israel, there are about 600,000 Palestinian citizens of Israel today who are what we call internally displaced refugees. They're living in Israeli cities because they were thrown off their lands in what are now probably kibbutzim. So all those issues were just thrown away. And of course, the prisoner issue, there was no guarantee of release. And the prisoner issue touches every Palestinian. Almost every Palestinian family has had a family member in prison. Put this all together, Arafat couldn't have signed this. Clinton wanted to go down in history as making this historical agreement. Barack was losing his popularity. He needed this peace agreement to continue. Uh, and uh, they both, for political reasons, pushed Arafat, pushed Arafat. When Arafat said no, Clinton got on Israeli TV and blamed Arafat. And Ehud Barak de uh, demonized Arafat. Shlomo Ben Ami blamed it all on Arafat. And a month later, we had the Intifada. And from that on, you know, the attempt to exclude Yasser Arafat, an elected leader, from the whole process.